Welcome, welcome everyone. Dr. Maria Sampalis, Lori Jacobson here from Australia. Today we're going live and uh, it's so nice to have you on today from uh, you know across the world. Um, it's the, the, the podcast of optometry around the world's gotten a lot of um, great uh, publicity, a lot of great insight. So I, I thought Australia would be the next thing that we talk about. So I wanna welcome you onto this podcast today. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Thank you for having me. Uh, for those of you that do not know him, uh, he is the eye care director for Bailey Nelson in Australia and New Zealand. He graduated in 2003 and completed advanced training in pediatric optometry and diploma in ocular therapeutics. Uh, after his first year of uh, career and practicing, he purchased his own practice and then grew that small clinic to a large format, uh, multi uh, testing rooms, specializing in complex contact lens fittings, pediatric care, and other services. After 10 years of private practice, he shifted into the eye care industry and ar arrived, you know, fast forward into vertically integrated company like Bailey Nelson. And he, he after noticing that, you know, eye tests were not noticed, or not uh, part of the offering, he collaborated with the founders and introduced optometry services and really changed the company model and eye care to only to full scope uh, in Bailey Nelson, Australia. And those of you that do not know, Bailey Nelson has grown to about 100 stores globally, and he is the professional service strategy for Australia and New Zealand. So welcome, welcome. Thanks, Maria. That's quite a rap sheet. <laughs> what is your uh, background and how uh, have you become, you know, Bailey Nelson's eye care director in Australia and New Zealand? Oh, look, it was an interesting story. It was probably more just, it was fortuitous. I didn't plan to be in this role. Um, like you said, I, I um, finished university and I started low in within Australia. Um, within a year, I realised what I really wanted and that was business ownership. Um, and so I bought my business. Um, and I was there for 10 years and it was really uh, exciting. It was a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, um, but I saw the changing landscape. Um, I was around when uh, Specsavers entered the market um, and that kind of shifted the dynamic. And then um, that was kind of halfway through. And then from that point, I was always kind of looking for the next best thing or the next new thing in the industry. So then I started noticing the likes of these vertically integrated companies. So like Warby Parker, Bailey Nelson, there's an, another couple in Australia. And I contacted a few of them to see uh, what they were all about. And I realized that they weren't actually offering eye tests. Um, so I contacted the co-founders of Bailey Nelson, I contacted everyone, but the co-founders of Bailey Nelson got back to me. Um, and we started a trial um, in a store in one of the, the first three stores in Australia. So the other two were just retail stores um, where I would work in my business. And then on a Friday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, um, I would leave my business, drive half an hour to this pilot store um, and I would test in the afternoons. Um, it quickly snowballed from there. Every time I tested, um, it, the store just tripled in, in sales and, and um, patients and et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of it ballooned out. Um, and it didn't take long for uh, Peter Nick, the co-founders, to realise that um, collaborating uh, or bringing retail and optometry together was the way forward. Um, so I ended up setting my business. I joined the company. And then we grew very quickly. We opened up 15 to 20 stores. Um, we actually hired a different eye care director. Um, uh, she went down a different path. And then that was kind of the, I guess, stroke of luck where uh, Pete tapped me on the shoulder and said, listen, I know you don't have much experience, but you know the company, you know what we stand for, you know what we're trying to achieve. Do you want the role? Um, and I said, sure, I'll give it a go. <laughs> if you take it easy on me. Um, so that was 2019. Um, I think it was just right place at right time. And um, ever since there, I've been kind of learning on the job. It's been an interesting roller coaster ride because it was only really a year of um, being in the role before COVID hit. And then it was really uh, navigating that difficult space of policy and infection control and a forever changing environment and going in and out of lockdowns. Um, and then we finally came out of it. And that's kind of when I really started getting into the role, what it means to develop um, the strategy and behind our eye care services and bringing it to the forefront of the company. 
Um, and so that's how we get to where we are today. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's great that, you know, the, you work for the company and the company, you know, from what I've talked with um, Dr. Lesser um, and what the company stands for, you know, they bring people up from working within. So people within the company have a chance to kind of move up. So that's great to see that you were working and, and you know, you had the opportunity to take on the next leadership role and they could also mentor you and in and, and, and that position since you said that, you know, you had little experience. But over time, you, you get you build it, right? And then you build relationships and people want to work for you because of what you stand for and what the company stands for. You also talked about, you know, changing landscape after you graduated. What have you noticed in, in Australia with the changing landscape? Look, I guess it's it's never been stable. Um, since I graduated and then I bought the business or my business, it was pretty, it was, that, that was a stable period between 2003 and 2008. Specsavers entered the market, shook things up a little bit. Um, it kind of splintered into different types of uh, company formations. Um, so you had high-end, um, it was what we call OPSM or Luxottica, um, and then they came to the market, uh, Specsavers came to the market very fast paced um, and provided great service, affordable eyewear. Um, and then you had independence and that was kind of the, the start of the shift in the dynamic. Um, and then, then you introduced the vertically integrated companies, what I would call contemporary optometry, um, because that's just a bit of a different skew where it's more of a fashion forward kind of dynamic. Um, and so that kind of changed it even further. That was the introduction of Baden Nelson, I guess Warby Parker to an extent, the influence of Warby Parker on Australia, certainly. Um, and then the further shift in, I think it, it's a result of all the, um, I guess the competitive nature of the industry is that we started to see a shift in um, just the way that independents work as well. So within the independent world, we started to see that the doctors started to diversify and specialize into or subspecialize into their areas of interest. So myopia control, pediatrics, um, co complex contact lens fittings, dry eyes, et cetera, et cetera. But it wasn't just specialization, it was like deep specialization where they went into advanced studies and they really focused on um, investment to, to, I guess, um, provide the best service within that field. Um, so that's a really exciting change in, in the, I guess the environment in Australia, because you're starting to get some really strong um, advocates for these subspecialties. Yeah. What did you notice the difference between, you know, Bailey Nelson demographics and how has that imp uh, impacted, uh, you know, optometry services in Australia? Um, look, I, I guess being that fashion forward company, we, um, we attract a younger demographic. So we're affordable. Um, so not to say that other companies aren't affordable, but we're particularly affordable. So complete price, frame, lens, multi-coat, all 445. Um, when I started, it was 95. Um, so all of a sudden, you got some really fashionable frames, which is really affordable. Um, and so that attracted um, a younger demographic who was after something that, that was fashion forward. And I guess the aesthetic of our stores kind of spoke to them as well. We're not that traditional optometry setup we go for. Um, a little bit unique um, store designs. Our first one was fitted out with antique furniture, and there was something quite funny about trying to find a frame within an antique bookshelf. Um, was the excitement of the find. Um, so that kind of led us to. It, so primarily, what we developed was, or what we became, was a company that attracted a younger demographic. And so our core demographic kind of ranges from about twenty years of age to thirty-five years of age. And so what that means is what that means for us and certainly our doctors is that um, the patient base um, being young uh, means that you have to work a little bit differently. Um, and so that would be you need to be very good at um, retinal screening and uh, diagnosis of retinal conditions because we see a lot of myopic um, young patients. Um, it's very, very common to see minus five, minus six, all the way to minus 10 on a daily basis. Um, a lot of keratoconics and keratoconics. Um, I think that's because our equipment, we have a, a, a nidic um, order of fracture and the keratometry features there is, makes it very easy to diagnose distorted mice or pick up a keratoconus with distorted mice. So we 
tend to pick up a um, have a high incidence of keratoconics. Um, so it's all these kind of young, young patient, dem, um, younger demographic diseases that we tend to notice in our demographic, and I think that that's how uh, unique to our company. Um, we don't really commonly see, um, you know, your 60, 70, 80 year old cataract with cataracts or glaucoma or macular degeneration. They, they're there, but they're not the primary uh, demographic of our company. Yep. Uh, you know, I've been talking to doctor optometrists all over the world and scope of practice varies tremendously uh, in different countries. Uh, how is Australia uh, leading the way with scope of practice and things like that? And Because it, it's changed, right? But it's it's changing for the good. So give us some background on that and some information for the listeners. Yeah, look, I think it is that diversification um, and that subspecialization. So the, um, the the more intense focus on dry eye, more intense focus on myopia control, uh, complex contact lens fittings. Um, you guys have therapeutics, though, correct? We we do. So that's that. I guess is relevant to anyone or all doctors. Um, yeah. We need it in, in, for different reasons across all of those subspecialties. Um, and then I think, um, importantly, um, our Optometry Association, Association is advocating for increase in scope of practice. And there's always conversations around what is, what is it that we can do to elevate our profession, make us more, um, I guess, build our reputation amongst the community, um, as well as support ophthalmology, uh, because as we know, they're a capacity and there's certainly not as many ophthalmologists around in Australia as there are optometrists. And so they're, they're advocating advocating for increased scope of practice for optometrists to support the ophthalmologists um, oh, and great. take up the load. Yeah, that's great because you don't hear a lot. Usually you hear kind of like optometrists and ophthalmologists kind of bumping heads all over the world on scope. But it's great that in Australia they, they see the value of the optometrist, how they can help them and, 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 and value them. And doctors at Bailey Nelson practice full scope, right? You have you said you do retinal imaging and things like that. Yeah, we, we have an Optos in every store in Australia and oh. New Zealand. Um, so re really important, I think, with the um, with all the myopic patients that we see. But it's becoming so so evident that you know, when you have these units, it just it, it's almost like smacks you in the face of how much pathology is actually out there hidden in the yeah. peripheral of your retina. We we speak on our phone. Uh, all our, we bring our our optoms together. We all speak through WhatsApp, and every day someone's posting another image of this unique retinal condition. One of our optoms today posted an image of a chirpy, which was almost like a third of the size of the retina. It was spectacular. Um, so yeah, um, it, the optoms has certainly changed the dynamic of how our optoms work. But we we don't tell our optoms how to do things. They have autonomy. Um, they can if they want to dabble in dry eye if they want to dabble in contact lenses then they have free reign to do so and we'll support them as best we can I guess we are a little bit confined because being a big company we want to uh, consolidate on our suppliers so we're confined by that we can't just go and purchase um, a random lens, lens from a random manufacturer but that's only because our systems are geared to support um, the 60 or 70 stores in Australia but whatever they want to do within the framework that they can, we advocate for it. We promote it. We encourage them to do so. Yeah. You know, I, I think optometry uh, in Australia really is ahead compared to other countries. But what do you see it in 10 years? What is your vision for optometry in Australia? Oh, it's a good question. Um, I would, I, I think it's that, that expansion of that scope of practice. So it's done to really... I, I would say I would love to see Australian optometry reflect what is happening in the United States, um, where we where you can see that um, the doctors over there have access to laser treatments, so iridotomies and SLT, um, oral therapeutics. We don't have access to oral therapeutics just at the, at the moment. We only use topical. So to me, it would be trying to work towards that and would obviously need the backing of ophthalmology. And the medical association but that hopefully is where we get to in in the 10-year period great you know i know a lot about bailey nelson in canada what what does it mean to be a, you know a optometrist uh bailey nelson in australia are there similarities are there differences yeah i i saw a podcast you had one of our doctors from canada um, a couple of weeks ago and i was listening to her i was watching the podcast and it was actually fascinating because 
she could have been one of the doctors that work in one of our stores in Australia. The, the way that she was speaking, it was almost like Bailey Nelson trans, transcends borders. It's it's the same across all um, all regions. I think that the one thing that's specific to Bailey Nelson is that we do come together. Uh, you know, in, opt in optometry, we work in our two by three metre optometry room, and it's um, it's isolating. Um, the one thing that we do really well is bring everyone together. And I can see that across all regions. It's in UK, it's in our New Zealand stores, it's in Canada and it's in Australia. Um, so it's amazing to see that we've been able to maintain that culture um, irrespective of where the store is. Yeah, no, that's great to see that. You know, and optometrists like to work in a corporate setting um, and, 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 and it's, you know, universal, right? It's, it's in Canada, Australia, UK, doctors are happy. A lot of doctors, you know, find different settings within, you know, brands within corporate optometry, what they like. And it's nice to kind of have the different flavors, but it's so refreshing and nice to have optometrists really like to be where they are, practice the way they want um, and have support um, from a company as well. Um, so I want to thank you so much for joining us today and giving us some insight on um, Bailey Nelson in Australia, but our scope in Australia too. And it's so refreshing to see that scope is, is, is expanding and changing in Australia. Um, Cause that's one of the things that, you know, with these podcasts is just educate optometrists, how fortunate we are in the U S with the scope that we have, but you know, also how optometry is also evolving and changing all over the world. So thank you so yeah. much for, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Priya.